What's up, y'all? I'm back again. It's DL Cows with episode 11 with our favorite co-host, Shay. And this time, we are talking about body image. Okay? That's what we're going to get into. Peace, love, and hair grease. Win the day because the day is already won. Let's go. I gotta win. Win the day. It's a day. A great day to be great. No, I can't sit back and wait. No, I gotta win. Win the day. It's a day. A great day to be great. No, I can't sit back and wait. Okay, what's up, babe? How are you doing today? What's I'm good? Good, I am good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. Okay, on um, mental health check on a scope from one to ten, how are we? Mm, I'm giving about a nine. Okay. Despite okay. breaking a nail and it being one oh nine outside. Oh I'm giving a nine. I didn't know it was one oh nine. Yeah. Okay. Well I'm giving a nine in this one oh nine degree heat too. <laughs> <laughs> because it is hot. H A W T hot. It is very for sure. So yeah, we just gonna um get into it. We're talking about body image today and the importance of you know everything that comes with it and how we relate to it. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So what are your current body goals? Okay. What you what you what you wanna look like, what you're looking mm. like. Okay, well my current body goals and I think just my ultimate body goals of like all time is to have a flat stomach. And that may be realistic or not, but I think, you know, one of my body goals is to have a flat stomach. I mean, I like where I am right now. Um, I'm learning to, like, love this body. It's kind of like I'm staying, like, at a at a current, um, I guess you could say, consistency mm-hmm. with where I am. It's, you know, the middle ground. I haven't been in the gym. I haven't been doing too much, like, overeating you know, so and you've been fasting. Yeah, so like it's like a balance. Yeah, so it's a balance. Um, so yeah, like currently, I just would really like a flatter stomach. I have to get in the gym to get that, but we'll talk more about that into the conversation. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> my current body goes is kind of what I am right now. It's giving grown woman weight. It's giving twenty nine. Mm-hmm. It's giving. You know, I am curvy. But it's a little heavier right now, yeah. like. But I've always, yeah, you know, yeah. I can't say too much because we're gonna get into that during yeah. the conversation. But yeah, she's she got that body that people would take to their doctor. Uh huh. Period. Snap a like picture. That's just yeah. That's just straight. Snap away. a picture and take it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But give me my credit, <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, we call this body the Shay. Mm-hmm. Period. The baddest Shay. I don't know about you. What the Shay's out there, but this one the baddest. Okay, I'm just saying. We love all the Shay's. Yes, we do. I love the Shay's. <clears throat> okay, so um, what has your body journey been like getting Uh-oh. to this point? Like Up and down. Up and down. That's really all my life. Like, Well, I'm not going to say all my life, but since like a junior in high school, mm-hmm. my way has been up and down. And then after my sister got pregnant with her son, for some reason I gained out of the weight. And since then, my weight has literally, I can get up to 155, I can be 125, and I look just fine either weight. But I prefer the 130, and right now I'm pushing about 135, 140 right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because that... That 155 don't look bad either, though. <laughs> that one, Ooh. that 155, real heavy. I ain't gonna Ooh. stunt with you. They could in a snicker. That, that 155, I love it. Look I'm honestly scared of the 155. I ain't gonna yeah. stunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, man. Okay, but um, my body journey has been very, very, very up, very, very down. Like it's like there mm-hmm. hasn't been a set medium. Like, now I would say is my set medium, but, like, even growing up when I was a little kid, like, I was a fat kid or whatever. Oh, that's and, a chunky monkey. <laughs> and um, I used to get picked on at school. They used to try to, at least. I used to beat them up in elementary school. <laughs> but um, the boys especially, the girls knew not to step. The boys always <laughs> tried it, and I beat them up. Um, <laughs> all three of elementary school. And then once I started um, becoming active, 
playing uh, basketball specifically, that's when I started to lose like all of that baby fat. And then um, in seventh and eighth grade, really seventh to 12th grade, I had just an athletic cut uh, body. I was still thick, had that booty back there. But um, if you have, you have seen my prom pictures, Oh, uh, that's something to see. Ay. That's Ay, something I was to see. I, I was really stacked. Um, and because I've had the image of, like, in my mind of being a fat kid, even when I was in high school, I still thought I was fat. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't. You wasn't. I wasn't fat in high school. I still had, I still had like, a, a pudge on my stomach, but it wasn't, like, you know. It wasn't I, what I you was used wasn't. to. Yeah, but because of that mind frame of being young and being caught fat and, you know, the family nicknames Big Juice and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah, like, seriously. Um, it Juice. has, you know, it has an effect yeah. on um, my journey. Or whatever. So now that I actually am big, I won't say fat, but I'm a little fluffy. Now that I'm a little Girl. more fluffy, I appreciate my body back then that I didn't get to appreciate in the present time. And I'm also learning to appreciate this journey that I'm on right now. So I don't look back and be like, it wasn't even that bad, you know? So I'm yeah. saying that now. It's not even that bad. Like, because I've been bigger than I am now. So it's like I'm really appreciating you know, this um, journey or whatever that I'm on. So, yeah, it's Mm -hmm. been very up and down, but up and down in the sense of weight, not necessarily, well, also necessarily in a mental way too, but we'll get into more later. But, yeah. It's definitely in a mental way. It's it's been up and down. Okay, so growing up, did you have positive um, self-image or negative self-image? You basically just said Yeah, I would say overall it was kind of, um, it was more negative than positive, I would say, because like I said, being picked on the nicknames and all of this stuff like that that shaped my body image for high school when I really wasn't even fat and like even coaches would say oh wow you lost um you lost some weight and it's like I remember one time a volleyball coach said hey um don't um don't gain all your weight back Uh -uh. just like but when I look back at all my pictures and everything I was never fat you know, like I, it was just the that's nice crazy so, for, the, for her to say. Yeah, that it was the volleyball way, coach at Poteet at the time, mm-hmm. and right. she was like, "Hey, uh, uh, be careful! You don't want to um, gain all your fat back or whatever, gain all your weight back." And that was between um, the end of the, my senior year, the end, and I was about to go to college or whatever. And um, I guess I started to gain a little bit weight because I wasn't working out as much. Maybe she was talking about so, the freshman fifteen. No, I wasn't there yet. I was still a senior in high school. Okay. Yeah. So, (laughs) so yeah, um, I would say it was more negative than positive. Now I'm learning to be more positive about it. And all my life I've been small. So mine was, mine was positive, but I didn't know back then it was positive, you know, because everybody would be like, oh, you are smaller than us. You are, you know what I'm saying? And I always have been small and I've always ran track. So I say with track, everybody used to say I have a track body. You know, I have a track body. Yeah, some track bodies. And so that's, you know, that's when I was just like, okay, being skinny ain't so bad because I am very athletic. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So um, when did you realize you had it going on? Like face card, body, oh, banging? Uh, uh, 1994 when I popped out, <laughs> when the toaster oven ding dong. I, w- I knew I was dead, you know? Okay. No, okay. I can accept it. <laughs> you can, but I'm going to give you part two of that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, okay, so I was the chocolate girl. I was the chocolate one in the family. Mm-hmm. So I really realized when my cousins and my sister used to call me dark and stuff like that mm-hmm. like you know the, the little names yeah. you know the when they used to call me the names and stuff i sometimes i used to cry and I, my granny she got fed up and she told me straight up go at her and you tell them this this and this and you stick your middle finger up while you're doing it and she would basically let me know like you don't ever let nobody make you feel any type of way you are beautiful your skin is beautiful your eyes are beautiful your lips are beautiful you know you are beautiful you are you are that. And that, I was probably, what was I? I think I was probably like nine. 
So I'll say since I was nine, I've been that girl. Mm -hmm. But I've really been that girl since 1994. But mm -hmm. what yeah. about you, boo? Okay, so um, I would say as a kid, like regardless of, like I said previously, I did have, you know, little nicknames here and there, you know, or whatever. But Nanny was, she like, I don't care what it is, I have always been just so pretty. And so to mm -hmm. Nanny, like, to this day, don't matter if I was chunky, little, whatever. I, I mean, it's just like, I'm the son to her. So I've like <laughs> kind of had, yeah. you know, the um, idea that I was a pretty girl. And I realized, you and know, I always say this. Girl. I'm a pretty girl. People can be beautiful, but everybody can't be pretty. <laughs> you know, and. <laughs> okay. I'm you just, said what you said. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So I, I I really always realized I was a pretty girl and um and then like as I grew up like in middle school and high school like I could I, I was pulling the boys yeah. and the girls. Yeah. You know, I was finesse Period. queen. So I mean so yeah, I've always known that I was a pretty girl. What it was say? a body face card part. ballet. Yeah, it was the neck and below that I was kinda skeptical about. But I knew that face card would never fail me. <laughs> I'm because and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk to him nice. You gotta talk to him nice, okay? Okay, so as y'all know, hair is a part of the body. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So, what has your hair journey been like? Because I know, but I need you to let them know. Because mm -hmm. okay. it's not easy with her and her hair. It's yeah, not easy. It's really not. But um, I love my hair, and I've always loved my hair. I've always been serious about my hair. I always, I've always, i never played about my hair. My mama taught me that don't let nobody in your hair. Don't let nobody play in your hair. Like, I wasn't the girl that would go to daycare and come back, and somebody what was playing in my hair. hair. That, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I just, because I, I, I'm a beauty shop baby as well, so mm -hmm. I just already kind of knew the seriousness of my hair. So I've always loved my hair. But um, I did get a perm. I can't remember my first perm, but it was pretty young because my hair was, my mama said it was just too much to deal with. And so she gave me a perm. I can't remember when, but I got a perm pretty young. And I basically kept a perm. Um, she wouldn't over perm it though. It was enough to still make it grow and things like that mm -hmm. and wouldn't put it on for too long. So it wasn't just nothing crazy, but I had a perm all the way um, up until like after high school, I just stopped getting them. And then there was a part of my hair that was permed, a part of my hair that was natural. Then I, my mama cut all the perm. My mama, she was just, okay, just cut it all off because I didn't want to get perms no more because it was mm -hmm. a very drastic change. My permed hair and my natural hair are completely different. Yeah. And my they don't look hair, good together. Yeah, my natural hair is very, very curly, very wavy, silky. My permed hair just looks like some hair that you blow dry and, you know, it's just kind of straight. It's not giving, you know, much, but it's thick. But yeah. So yeah. But now where I'm at, would I have locks? Um, I grew locks probably two years after I, um, or maybe a year after I did the big chop. I did finger coils, um, and that's how I started my locks. Mm -hmm. And we have been good ever since. Um, I will say my hair reflects what I eat. Mm hmm. So, like, when I stopped eating red meat, the texture of my hair changed again. And yep. at one point in the time, I was, like, really blonde. And I was also big. I think I, I was 250. And Six. Yeah, I was 250, big, hair was blonde. I thought I had it going on. But when I look back at the pictures, I'm like, my hair looks so bad. And mm -hmm. then um, I just stopped eating red meat. I lost some uh, pounds. I was working at Amazon, so I lost even more weight. I got, like, almost <clears throat> back to playing shape for real, honestly and truly. And, um, yeah, but my hair journey has been, it's been really good. I would say it's been more positive than negative. I've loved literally every piece of my hair journey. I've um, chopped off the color from my hair, so it's even more healthier now. Mm -hmm. It's growing very fast. It's already back to the middle of my back. Mm -hmm. So really good. Yeah, and Always. I um, cut it this year. So it's like already like gained almost like it's gained at least half of what I cut. So the hair mm -hmm. journey has been amazing. Yeah. yeah, what about you? Oh, one thing about the hair. The hair is going to hair. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, my hair journey, it's been all right. It's been all right when I was, I've always had long hair. I used to have long hair. 
and I used to, I knew how to cut it. Well, I grew up in a, a beauty shop, then I learned how to braid and stuff, so I started doing my hair when I was, like, in third grade, and once I got about, I think I cut my hair when I was 22, I cut it off, and then I've been short hair and bald since, and Ooh, right now, wee, right wee. now, I am... I have a pixie cut. <laughs> it's giving grown woman as well, so it's fitting the weight. Mm -hmm. So your girl is looking really grown and sexy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the hair journey is, and right now I'm learning. I'm I'm in a new journey now with my hair. I'm learning how to do different pixie cuts and curl it, and I'm trying to get the top longer so I can do more styles on my own. But yes, I'm back mm -hmm. in the beauty shop, and yes, I love yes. it. And I have. Someone who speaks in two and yes. loves on my head while love she do her. my hair. I have a hair appointment coming soon. So, yeah. yeah. I love her, man. Mm -hmm. Tanya Skills on Instagram, Skills Salon. Tap in with her. I'll make D put this on her Instagram so y'all can see. Yeah. Picture yeah, her card. Very, very uh, good. Love her. She really legit with it. You know what she doing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, moving along from here, <clears throat> when you envision your childhood self, what would you tell her about the body she was in? Mm. I would tell her you are one of one. You are only, God made only one of you. You are beautiful. You are love. And yeah, you're just one of a kind. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. What would um, you tell your baby self? I would tell my would younger tell self, self my yeah. Dad. I would <laughs> tell my younger self that it's okay. It's going to be okay. And don't compare your body. Um, and even though you're not a big person that does comparisons, what you like in someone else you can like different in yourself. Oh, yes, yes. That's good. Yeah. Because it's really good. I know what I'm attracted to. Mm -hmm. And growing up and a little even bit now, which is what I'm working on that, I want to be what I'm attracted to, but I am not that. Like I'm literally the exact opposite from what I'm attracted to. Yeah. I like chocolate women, short hair, <laughs> body banging, bow boom. Not saying my body ain't banging, but I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, I'm because not, I like, think your body Shay is banging. Is who I'm, that's who I'm attracted uh, attracted to. Like, like she is the blueprint. Period. You know. So, <laughs> but I I'm so far first. from that. And it's like just because you're not what you're attracted to doesn't mean you can't love and be attracted to yourself. Like you don't have to be that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would tell myself. Just love who you are. Your body is going to go up and down. That's your journey period. That's it's going to be life. up. It's going to be down. Going to be up. Going to be down. It's going to be very drastic. But as long as you keep um, going with the flow and just really loving who you are, mm -hmm. that's what's going to help you find the peace with your body. Because if you always love who you are, who you're becoming, you focus on the mental aspects of it, you'll never um, waver from yourself. You'll never be down about your body. Yep, and and your body is also like seasons. Every season, our body changes as well, just like our skin changes with the seasons, yeah. just like our hair texture changes yeah, with changes the It changes with the habits Yeah, as well. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, do you have body boundaries? When did they start and what inspired them? Mm -hmm. So my body boundaries would be like, touching like I'm not a big um toucher like a hugger I really don't like to be touched um like a, even a graze of like the arm or skin like I'll wipe it off or whatever yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I don't she really I'm does. just yeah I'm just kind of like and if I don't know you please don't touch me Are we we if we're like in a store like I'm very like if you could draw a box around my feet as long as no one gets into that, we're good. And I think this started with me when I was very young. Like, I just never liked to be touched. Textures freak me out sometimes. Um, yeah, like, if I don't know you and you're not one of my loved ones, I'm not trying to hug you. <laughs> I'm not, you know, it's nothing. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with other people, but I'm just 
that's where the boundary is like mm -hmm. with me like don't you know arms length set or arms length even before COVID and all that I've always been a six feet away from other people type of person yeah <laughs> so and I am such a hugger if a stranger if I know that a stranger need a hug I will give a stranger a hug I know for a fact later I'm gonna take a shower or whatever you know what I'm saying not like that not not like you dirty or whatever but that's just I don't you know just mm -hmm. like you're not yeah I am but don't touch me like as as to touch me like and really don't even ask just don't touch me <laughs> unless it's no nah, but can yeah we hug? can we hug or something like yeah, that yeah yeah, yeah. i've seen you do that before but yeah but i'm definitely a hugger yeah i love hugs mm -hmm. um yeah <clears throat> yeah i think what inspired those is just me being who i am like my boundaries my physical boundaries me being who i am and um, also, I've always had a um, a solid like respect for my body. I don't know. I just um, even when it came to sex, like I was, I didn't have sex young. I lost my virginity my freshman year in college, so I've been a very kind of like no, like I'm just I'm just very kind of weird in that way. If you want to say like I'm kind of like back off don't touch and me you know, for real also, even in that physical way i'm just like uh nope it takes a lot to get me to be vulnerable in a physical like sexual aspect as well so yeah mm -hmm. and for and it's also um it was instilled early like my mom like don't let nobody touch you if somebody touch you yeah. you tell me mm -hmm. don't Same. you know what i'm saying don't be afraid to tell me it don't matter what they say what they gonna do you tell somebody you tell me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that plays a part mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, my family always asked, um, "Has anybody made you feel uncomfortable?" And we mm -hmm. had that universal understanding that when someone makes you feel uncomfortable, it's a sexual, physical touch that you um, do not approve of. You don't like it, and even if they weren't <clears throat> trying to do that, you still voice it because as you grow up, especially as a young girl, you know you can't even socialize with your dad and your uncles the way that you once did you have to stop sitting on laps you have yep. to stop they can't hug you the same yep. or whatever so when you start to get like to that age it's like i kind of felt uncomfortable when they did boom 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 and it's not that they even try to all the time it's that just voice that they made you feel uncomfortable so a conversation can be had because this baby is getting older she's not a baby no more yep so that's always been instilled i still in have to have conversations to this day with certain people up to my mom about certain people who make me feel uncomfortable because I am mm -hmm. attracted to women. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, if somebody make you feel uncomfortable, it don't matter who it is. It don't matter how old you are. If somebody make you feel uncomfortable, you have to tell somebody, yes. Yes. you have to tell somebody don't hold that in. Cause that just adds on. Like you have to tell somebody. Yep. Like have somebody advocate for you as well, because it's um it's unfair, especially when um you're somebody who developed faster or something, or mm -hmm. you thick. You're a thick young girl. You grow up thick. Now you're a thick woman. Like people can be kind of passive aggressive towards that sexuality and towards that body and stuff. So you always want to speak up when you feel uncomfortable. And it's not that you're like throwing anybody under the bus. Just like Shay said, always speak up. Always tell somebody. And sometimes it is throwing them under the bus because the ones because who they is to be. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah. Because some of them do uh -huh. it on purpose. It'll be passive aggressive, but they'll still do that. We throw them under the bus and, 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 and run them over with the bus, okay? And, and reverse and, and go up again. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All on right. the brighter side. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> um, this kind of goes into the last question. Where did you learn your body habits, and who or what inspired your body habits? Um, shoot, like we just said, mom's telling me early, don't let nobody touch you, granny. Um, then I've always been in track, so track really played a part in my, um, body. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's. Mm -hmm. I would say I learned them, you know, at home. I, as I always say, y'all will hear me say this over and over again. It all starts at home. It all starts, it at, all home. starts at home. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like where I was inspired. My mom, my nanny, like, um, even growing up, developing a, a relationship with my dad, him, like, baby, just don't be, you know, 
and we have raw conversations, so I won't put the raw on here, but <laughs> hey, just don't be out here being loose and all this other type of stuff. Loose have respect, a goose. Have don't respect get me yourself. started. Yeah. Have respect for yourself at all times, you know, and yeah. And like, regardless, one um, thing that I realized growing up is that I don't have just a natural like flat body or like whatever, like flat stomach and all this and that, mm -hmm. I have to work out to get that. And the farther I am from working out is the harder it is to get to working out. So yeah. it's like, that's what has inspired just my entire um, journey or whatever. Mm -hmm. You are dragging a wagon. Hey. <clears throat> sure something, sure something that you do that helps with your body image. Mm. Um, I write every day and mm -hmm. I also have positive self-talk. Like I would, I used to like be really good at giving positive self-talk in every aspect of my life mm -hmm. except my body. So now it's like I have, to, I've yeah. literally worked on girl. It's okay. You yeah. good. You've got like, so you much are better. Grown. You got you it are so good. much better. Like, it's okay. You fine. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's it's all right. And I think a lot of this comes from also like, although I have my feminine aspects of me, my self image wants to be more masculine looking. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why it's hard for me to sometimes accept my my thickness and my like just is because. I would, I don't know, some parts of me would rather look like a guy in some areas, just being completely, yeah. you know, vulnerable and uh, transparent. That's it, yeah. just, um, and um, we can actually call that body dysmorphia, like mm -hmm. where you have a hard time um, associating yourself with what you have. You, dis you dissociate yourself with feminine qualities and more associate yourself with the masculine qualities. And um, that's just kind of what... It is. I didn't even know I was gonna say that today, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking hey, like, like, yeah, you, um, you just hit, you just went in. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a, that's a like real thing. <laughs> like you can even be diagnosed with body dysmorphia and things like that. But yeah, that's something that I have struggled with, and now like studying um, mental health, becoming a therapist, I realize, oh, this is what I'm struggling with. I know, I now know how to like you know, treat myself and self-talk and, you know, okay, now it makes sense why I'm always struggling with the image of my body, uh -huh. you know, so some of the things that I do is um, positive self-talk because it's not what the world thinks of me. That's never been the issue of what someone else thinks of me. It's what I'm thinking of myself based on what's in my head. So, yeah, just positive self-talk, straight up. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, positive self-talk as well. Um... I'm at yoga every Wednesday. I love yoga. Um, shout out to Taryn for putting me on yoga yes. and um, bringing me to her class. And shout out to Chinook because yes, he's Chinook. the best. We'll have him best one day on here yoga too. teacher, yoga instructor. He's way more than just a yoga instructor, but he is amazing. Um, also, I'm a vitamin girl. I take my vitamins. Um, and, and I yeah, forget. we're conscious. We're conscious eaters as well. Yeah, she want to take vitamins. D want to take vitamins every day, but she think I supposed to remind her every single day. I forget, y'all. My memory is like I'm. I'm very forgetful. Yeah. So yeah, that's why she should probably help me with them. Maybe if she just set them on the dresser, I see them and take them. But she's a wheeze. Okay. <laughs> but after so long, don't y'all think? Don't y'all think that? If I give her the vitamins every day, one day she's just supposed to be like, okay, vitamins, I need my vitamins. It's not that. No, it's not how my brain works. It's not that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But yeah, um, what else? That's it. Oh, meditate. Mm -hmm. Meditation is very good for the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what would you say is the importance of a positive body image? Uh, to love the skin you're in. And if you don't, at least learn to love the skin you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, um, and the reason why like, it's just important to have that mindset is that if you don't love the skin that you're in, you're going to always be fighting yourself, and it's exhausting, I know from experience. 
It's yeah. exhausting. Just love it. Love what it does. Treat it right. Give it nutrients. Give it like what it loves. Like I will say, my um, what my body is loving is juice. One hundred percent natural juice. Mm-hmm. I I like it has even shed. I've shed a couple of inches. Just you know, just a little bit. Just off mm-hmm. of doing that for like a month. Mm-hmm. And Terry said your skin look good. Yes, and my skin like oh, and that's another thing like the skin part. That's also like the face. We didn't tap into the skin. Man, that. Because I'm having trouble right now. Yeah, man, I had, I would like, I would li- literally be on a verge of a breakdown because I'd look in the mirror and be like, what is going on? But it's like, you have to love the skin for communicating with you. Love your body for telling you, this is what it likes, this is what it doesn't like. Mm-hmm. And just follow suit. And it's a lot of trial and error for your skin in general. It's a lot of trial and error for your body in general. But... You have to love the skin that you're in so you can appreciate what it is telling you. Otherwise, it's a constant, constant battle. And I don't want to say you'll eventually lose that battle, but that's a battle that you're not trying to fight. Like, your mind will beat you every time if you're not yeah. feeding it the right things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. Okay, how does food come into play with the body? Mm-hmm. Okay, so like like I was just saying, like with the juice and things like that, um, my and also like the red meat. I don't eat any red meat. My body swells from red meat, like straight up. If I were eating red meat right now, I would be two hundred and fifty pounds, two fifty five off top. I'm a big girl, so my weight, my uh, my plan shape weight was one seventy five, one seventy eight at the biggest, and one sixty five at the lowest. My natural weight without working out is in between about 210 and 235 something like that so the red meat makes me swell it's like Mm -hmm. i you know it make me um, swell as well yeah it it makes me swell like i would literally be 250 right now um i would also say like i don't need to be eating chicken if i wasn't eating chicken right now i would probably be i think i'm I might be 240 at the... I'm no bigger than 240 right now. Probably 235. I would probably be a good 200, 210 if I wasn't eating chicken. And well, we I've been trying to tell myself soon. to stop eating chicken, you know. So, so the wings just take over yeah. us. And everything... <laughs> yes, it really does. Everything um, doesn't work for everybody. I also would like to say that, like, meat works for some people. I know, especially men, like... Like, my dad, he can literally eat nothing but protein for, like, a weekend or whatever because he's trying to balance something out, and it does him good. But if he starts to eat too much greens, like broccoli and things like that, his knees will start hurting really bad. So it just depends on what your body does. Yeah, you just it have to It literally depends. It. Like, eat your vegetables. Um, um, for instance, like, if you're having – your body also – your your bowels also reflect what your body is doing. Uh-huh. So if your bowels are more liquidy and they're too soft, you need to get more fiber. That would be potatoes, regardless of what people <laughs> out there trying to tell you. <laughs> potatoes get get you extra fiber, and it also you know <laughs> it represents gut health. Okay, like it really does, and that will help. I just literally went through that um, not too long ago. So. Yeah, that's how food plays a, a great part. Your bowels reflect the food that you eat. Your body reflects all of it. And just do what your body loves. My body loves juice. My body loves natural. My body loves greens. I kind of need to back away from, you know, the chicken. You ready to meet that dirty bird? Yeah, the dirty bird. That's <laughs> <laughs> a carry. Yeah. Um, I know when, when, when I eat bad, I feel it. I got to get right. Got to fast. Got to... Get back on some greens every day. Make sure you're on your juices or salad. And go crazy with the salads. Like, go crazy with them because I love me mm-hmm. a good salad. Ooh, I'm about to eat the rest of one today. <laughs> Man, that salmon salad from uh, Glorious. Glorious. Ooh, we, yeah. Yeah, we feast from Glorious yesterday. And Shout that's out my to problem, babe. too. I always be trying to feast. That's I but just it, love no, but food, we had, y'all. we feast on salads. Yesterday was salads. I had soup mm-hmm. and I had you had quesadillas. Spinach quesadillas. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. I ate the whole thing. 
I love food, y'all. Yeah, I just love we are food. definitely foodies, though. Oh, I love food. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So, how does mental health play a part in your body image and being active? Oh, we. Okay. I have been my smallest when I was going through something mentally. Like when, mm-hmm. or something traumatic happened. When I got, um, like once, I just wasn't in a good space. A good space. I wasn't um, working and stuff, and I just got really depressed in a sense. I don't mm-hmm. like to say depressed, but I wasn't myself, and I had got so small. And I just looked in the mirror and I broke down because wow, you know what I'm that. saying? And I didn't want to go nowhere. I couldn't fit. It was because I we was finna go somewhere and I couldn't fit like three three outfits. Or whatever. I'm getting emotional talking about it because, man, I was, I broke down. Like, I broke down then. And that that's one incident I can, you know, put my finger on that mental health plays a part. And then uh, when I was working for Amazon, I got shot at. And I um, got so small. And that's because I was just, I just wanted to go to sleep. Go to sleep and wake up. Go to sleep and wake up. And I started drinking epitamine, and that swelled me up. So I stopped drinking it, and then I got right back small. So mental health dis- definitely plays a part when you, like, right now, in, in this this space that I am currently, I feel good mentally. I look good physically. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, it, it truly reflects. And what you eat reflects on your skin, how you feel you you like what they say uh you don't look like what you've been through some mm-hmm. people look like what they've been through That's you know what i'm saying in those times that i was down i was definitely looking like what i was going through so yeah mental health definitely plays a part mm-hmm. and then being physical um i can just tell like we was heavy in the gym last year i can tell that i don't go to the gym but i still look good i was yeah. way more toned my six pack was coming through like my stomach is flat, but I don't have a six pack like when I was constantly, consistently in the gym. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Um, I second the whole you know mental part. Like when I'm when I'm um, not feeling so good. See, I'm an emotional eater, so I eat because I'm happy. I eat, eat because I'm sad. I eat because it's a celebration. I am an emotional eater. So, yeah, (laughs) I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, I wish I could say if I once I got down and depressed, I would lose a little bit of weight. But no, you know, (laughs) but, you know, that's just I'm just an emotional eater. So depending on what I'm um, going through, it depends on kind of more so of what it is that I'm eating. I'll say that. So I'll eat more fatty foods when I'm depressed. I'll eat more. And then when I'm happy, it's like. Eat whatever you want other okay. than red meat stuff. So it's just it just really depends. But I will say the um the mental aspect as far as like the physical part, um, I I don't know, I have an odd relationship with working out. Because it's like when I get back in the gym, it's like I feel good, but I'm always thinking about how I look now. She wants instant results. Yes, and see, I'm a visual person. So how I learn and how what makes me keep going on anything is by seeing. Like, that's just, and don't get me wrong, I have faith, you know, like you have faith in the things that you can't see. But So I guess you could say that I have a lack of faith in physically working out because even as like an ex-ball player, like, I was always in the gym, and then once that stopped for me, I stopped working out. And I shoot, that's the same with me and Trek. I stopped. I just stopped, and then once I stopped working out, that's when I started. That's when I got bigger, and things like that. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I just, I would say it does. Like I'm trying to figure out where I am mentally in my relationship with working out and going to the gym. Because once I master that, I know that I'll be in the gym consistently. Um, and I'll do it for a minute. I can do it like for like a month and 
somehow just fall off because I don't know. It's it's the mental part. Mm-hmm. It's the mental part, and I try to do positive self talk, which works. Um, and it's also eating habits as well. Like I need to do whatever I can mentally and like habitually <clears throat> to see results. And one of those things right now is to stop eating chicken. <laughs> Like, if I were to stop eating chicken, I would know I would see the weight fall off instantaneously. Okay, we'll put a date on that. Yeah. We're going to put a date on that. Because fish and turkey, and then also not frying the turkey. Stop frying the turkey. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you don't have to have fried turkey fingers. You don't. You don't. She needs to speak for herself. I won't fry yours. I will fry um, mine. Yes, I do not need the fried. So as long we're gonna as you're, boil hers. So you're willing to fry yours and bake mine? Yeah. Oh well, we got a winner, winner turkey dinner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I cannot with her. Okay, so y'all hold me to this because this is okay. Recorded. So next, the next couple podcasts, we're gonna let y'all know if we stop eating chicken or not, or the date we put on it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to tell Nanny it's a hard no. Nanny ain't going for that. Yeah, I'm just telling her she would like to offer stuff. No, she, made no. Tyranny, she made Terry <laughs> eat that chicken down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we. Oh, okay. Wee. Okay, quotes. Oh, you're asking me. Uh-huh. So, well, I'll okay. go first. My um okay, okay. You can go. my <laughs> quote is the one that I put out on the day is one yesterday and it is um buy into yourself, go all in for yourself. If you don't, who will? You know, Hello. it's just like for instance with my goals that I wanna do physically, because I'm getting stuff done, you know, as far as the work and stuff goes with the building the business, but go all in for yourself. You mm-hmm. know, go all in, buy into yourself. Yep. And that's what I need to do with my habits. Just go all in, buy in, because you already know the results are going to be good. Hello, yep. like, just do it. Invest in yourself. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Mine is, you are more than you was yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I got that mm-hmm, from a poem mm-hmm. D wrote and let me hear. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> a good poem, y'all. Y'all will get that eventually, but. It's really yeah. good, really good. Yes, yes. So what about music? What music you got? Um, mm, I don't know, cause I kind of been listening to podcasts. Um, okay, well, what podcast you been listening to? Subconscious Mind okay. Mastery podcast okay. on all platforms. It's really good, and some other ones, but I can't think of the names off top. Mhm, mhm. That's what's up. Well, the music that I have, I've been listening to um, Dame Dalla, very heavy since he dropped. Damian Lillard, he plays for the Portland Trails, Trailblazers. Oh, yeah. He is like that on the court for real, for real. He's one of the stars in the league, and he is also like that with that pen, straight up. So, yeah, I've been listening um, to that, and I've also been listening to Russ, um, his new album. I forgot to download and that Dame so when I got at your car. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, yeah, that's... Um, that's where I am with the uh, with my music and stuff. And yeah, mm-hmm. parties, podcasts. <laughs> I also been listening to us. Duh. <laughs> of course, the links can be found in the episode info on whatever app you're listening to. Yes, Omar talks to the moon. Be the light. Pro T, get it. Um, since we get out of here, mental health. Check. Yes, mental health check. Mm-hmm. I'm giving a ten. I'm giving a ten too. I feel good. And I need a snack though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to have dinner. I need dinner. Yeah, dinner by six. Dinner. Hopefully, uh, uh, try to stop eating hours. by eight p.m. when the sun goes down. But yeah, I'm giving a ten. I really like that. Um, we hold a space and a platform for these conversations because I even surprise myself sometimes. Yeah, I was just did, about like, to say you did. You did surprise I kind of me got as into, well. Like, I got pretty. I got pretty deep, and that says a lot about where I am with my body image because this is some stuff that I really wouldn't share. I just keep it to myself. Mm-hmm. But hey, somebody out there needs this. You're going through what I'm going through, and hey, just love on you. You'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Buy into yourself. It'll all get better. 
Yep. Bit by bit. Speak, speak up for yourself. Speak up for yourself. Love on yourself. You are all you got. Period. All right. And that is it for episode 11, body image and the relationship we have with our bodies. Peace out. Bye-bye. You know what it takes to be great. Apply the pressure. They gon' start off by winning the day. Winning the day. Huh. I'm winning the day. Huh. Yeah, I'm winning the day. I'm winning the day. I'm winning the day. Yeah, I'm winning the day, I'm winning the day, I'm winning the day I'm winning the day, I'm winning the day